Hi guys, I'm here today to provide a demo on how to configure Presonus Studio One to connect to the Expert Sleepers ES3 modular interface. And specifically what I'm going to do is show you how to set up a voice controller instrument so that uh, you can use the instrument to play your modular synth on Presonius Studio. So to kind of give you an overview of how my system is set up, I'm using the latest version of Presonius Studio 1 and that version's version 2.07 as of November 2012. And I'm running it on Windows 7 64-bit. I've got a RME audio interface that has three ADAP ports on it. One of the ADAP ports is connected to my ES3 interface, so my modular system. So that's kind of a, a an overall setup of my system. And before you start configuring the voice controller instrument, the first thing you want to do is look at the audio setup in Presonia Studio 1. And I do that by clicking on the audio IO setup panel. And if I look at the inputs on my system, basically I just have one stereo input that I'm using. It's a SPDIF input, and that's uh, what I'm using to monitor incoming audio. The output of my system uh, currently has, I only have one uh, stereo output, and that's going to my, my monitors. Uh, I'm going to add six additional outputs. So you can see that I have all these unassigned output channels. So I'm going to actually create interfaces for each one, for the, the first six of those. So I'm going to add essentially six mono channels. And each channel, as I, as I add them, Persona Studio One is automatically selecting the first available output, basically, and which hap happens to be on my ADAT1 uh, port. So it's using the first six channels on that ADAT port. This is the ADAT port that's connected to my ES3 interface. So what I've just done is I've created six output channels that are labeled sub one through sub six, and I've mapped each channel onto a, a, a channel of that ADAT connection that's connected to my ES3 interface. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see down here in the mixer panel, you can see those six new output connections. If you don't see the mixer panel, you just click on this mix button here uh, to pull up the mixer console. If you don't see these, these particular outputs, then just make sure you have uh, the outputs selected. You can see I can enable or I could hide those those outputs if I want to. The same thing with the inputs. I'm I'm also showing the 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 instruments that are set up as well. Okay, so I've got six outputs set up, and those six outputs are mapped to channels that are connected to my my ES3 modular interface. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a voice controller instrument to a track. I'm just going to select it and drag it over and drop it. And it automatically creates an instrument track for me. And there's my voice controller instrument. This is using uh, Silent Way 2.0 is the current version of the, the, uh, the plugin that I'm using. So I, I've got the, uh, the voice controller. If you click on the preferences under voice controller, you can set, set up the, 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 uh, the voice controller instrument to use the, uh, to, to expose a certain number of outputs. I have it set up to expose six mono outputs. And that's under, in the preferences panel. So uh, I have it set up for six outputs, but you don't see those virtual instrument outputs. And, and Persona Studio One, you've actually got to enable those. So if you go down to this little instrument section here, click on the drop down 
under the voice control and hit expand. Now you'll see six interfaces. The first one is actually already enabled. I'm going to go ahead and enable the other interfaces and you see those pop up over here on the mixer console. So those are those are virtual outputs coming from the voice controller instrument. What I've got to do is I've got to actually map those virtual instrument outputs to my ADAT outputs because ultimately we want whatever signals is is put on a virtual instrument output we want that signal to then sh uh, uh, show up on our ES3 modular interface by default these virtual instrument outputs are mapped to the main output which we definitely don't want uh, because otherwise you would just be listening to you know, garbage coming out of your, your main output, uh, you know, those control voltage signals that are, are being uh, emitted by the, the virtual instrument. So we want to take each one of these virtual instrument outputs and map it to an individual channel on our ADAT output. And so I'm going to ma map virtual output 1 into sub 1, virtual output 2 into sub 2, and so on. So each one of these virtual outputs from the instrument gets mapped to a corresponding channel on the ADAT interface. And so that's set up. So what, what I've essentially just done again is I, I, I've configured the personas so that any output signal from the voice controller instrument, that output signal is going to be transmitted out the an individual channel on the ADAT interface that's connected to my ES3. So any signal that is output on the virtual instrument or the, vir the voice controller instrument virtual output 1 is going to be connected to channel 1 on my ADAT interface and is going to show up on the first socket or port number 1 on the ES3 modular interface. So everything kind of the signal just flows through all the way to, do, to channel one on the ES3 interface. I'm not quite done yet. So well, uh, what else I need to do here is I, I need to load in a calibration profile. I've already created a calibration profile for the instrument that I, I've the ES3 interface connected to. This is something you need to do in advance and you need to have a c calibration profile uh, enabled on the virtual instrument before you can begin to use it. So I've loaded in that uh, that profile and uh, I can send MIDI, MIDI signals to the instrument. And you can actually hear my my semi-modular synth. Uh, you can hear the output from my semi-modular synth. It's receiving a pitch CV signal from port 1. And if you look at the output section of the virtual instrument, you can kind of see how the um, e each port, one through six here, is mapped. Uh, the port one is mapped to pitch. So if you, it's kind of a matrix. If you look into the pitch column, you see there's a one there, meaning that it's it's uh, the the channel one is is patched into the pitch s control voltage. So. Port 1 is control voltage, port 2 is the gate, port 3, 4, and 5 are envelopes, uh, and port 6 is a trigger. And so I've got that port 1, the pitch control voltage, on the ES3 modular interface connected to the control voltage input on my semi-modular synth. I've got the gate, which is port 2, on the, the ES3 module plugged into the gate input on my synth as well and if I just send the, again if I just send the MIDI uh, signals via my keyboard controller to the virtual instrument then it is sending those control voltages and if you look at the bottom of the uh, of the Persona Studio software if you look at the mixer console you'll see those control voltages actually being output through the virtual instrument outputs and then also via the ADAT channel outputs.
So pr pretty simple. Now, if, if you can't hear it, you can't hear your synth on your system that it might be because you need to just simply create an audio track and make sure you have that audio track input set to the the input of your audio interface and that you also enable that that track for monitoring purposes on my particular system i've got a a piece of software called total mix installed it's it's part of the rme interface and it allows me to do zero latency monitoring. So I'm actually, I'm actually in my particular system directly monitoring the SPDIF input, and that's why I don't need to, for the purposes of this, of this demo, have a separate audio track that I'm, I'm monitoring. So uh, normally I would have that in place, but because of the way I'm actually doing a, a, a screen capture uh, video recording of, of my system. I, I'm using the zero latency monitoring instead. So that's uh, pretty much all there's to it. I, I think it's pretty straightforward to set up. Again, the key is just to make sure you are you understand how you're routing those signals out of the virtual instrument and into your ADAT interface. If you've got that set up properly, then controlling your instrument should be pretty straightforward. I hope that this demo was helpful and thanks for watching.